So yesterday we looked at dilations and how we change the size of objects. Um, today we're going to uh, talk about what happens once we have a dilation performed. Uh, how, what does that look like? How can we use that uh, in an everyday type of situation? So just by way of review, how do we perform a dilation? Uh, this should be something you definitely know. All we do there is we multiply by the scale factor. Remember, if that scale factor is bigger than one, that makes the object bigger. If it makes it smaller than, if it's smaller than one, that's going to make it uh, reduce or smaller. So, uh, when a figure is dilated, when I do this, I get what we call similar figures. Notice the word "similar." They're kind of a little alike. Um, but as this is uh, after we do that verb, after we dilate, we get two objects that are similar. And similar figures. Here's your definition. Uh, they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. If you could look at the, the giraffes to the left here. Um, you have a uh, mama giraffe, baby giraffe. Same shape, not the same size. Um, basically, we're keeping the angles the same, just like we talked about yesterday, but different side lengths. So take a look at uh, a couple examples uh, here we're going to work through. Here we have a 10-inch tall picture and a 14-inch wide picture. So we're comparing uh, the height to the width. We're going to scale this. Scale you can read as dilate. Uh, we're going to dilate this to one and a half inches tall. So notice this is a reduction. So if I had to find a scale factor for this, it would be less than one. So draw a little picture here. This is 10 inches tall. Uh, that doesn't look like, uh, let me redraw that here. So it's 14 inches wide. So the width is bigger than the height. Uh, and that's going to become a smaller object that's one and a half inches tall. It's not drawn to scale necessarily, but there you go. Again, scale factor should be less than one. So the question is, uh, how do I calculate the scale factor? Well, remember, the scale factor is when I take the old object and multiply it to get the new object. So there's a relationship there between old and new. So the formula for scale factor then, SF is scale factor, is just we take the new object's dimensions, and we, uh, we write that in a ratio to the old object's dimension. And then what we can do is we can get a unit rate. So take a look at this one. Our new dimensions, if we look at new over old, our new dimensions are 1.5 inches tall to 10 inches tall, uh, tall on the old one. If I divide that out, it's 0.15. Now think about that. Would that make sense? It should because that means it's 15 one hundredths as big. If we multiply the old by 0.15, I get a smaller object. Well, then how do I use this to answer this question? How wide should the picture be on the web page? Well, remember, scale factor, I multiply everything by 0.15. So I have this 14-inch uh, width right here. So all I need to do with my scale factor then is take that 14 inches, multiply it by 0.15, just like I multiplied the uh, 10 by 0.15. So for the new width, I'm going to take 0.15 times 14. <laughs> <clears throat> do that on the calculator 0.15 times 14 and that gives me 2.1 uh, let's look back we need you we need labels here if I look back I went from inches so I'm gonna have inches here when it's different labels we're gonna take another look at this in a second we have to be a little bit more careful so now uh, I want you to make sure you have this formula written down we're gonna use that again in a second let's look at another example um, is there a different way I could solve the same problem? If I have uh, an old picture and a new picture, if I have an old picture and a new picture, can I solve this a different way? Well, yeah, I could use a proportion. If they relate to each other in a ratio, then those ratios should be equal when I have width and height compared to each other. So look at what I'm comparing. I'm comparing tall to wide. And then notice how wide is what I'm trying to find. So x, I'm going to make your new width, because it's what I don't know, so call it x. And then I'm going to set up my proportion. A couple ways I could do this, but I'm going to do uh, 10 tall to 14 wide. Then all I'm going to do on the other side is I'm going to take that 1.5 inches tall. The other information I know, since I have tall on top, I'm going to put that on top. And remember, x is width, so I'll put x on bottom here. And then it's just going to be cross-multiplying. So we have 10 times x on one side. 14 times 1.5 is the other cross-product. I think we're going to have to get that calculator out for this one. But 10x equals whatever 14 times 1.5 is. 
find the calculator here. That's 21. Then when I divide by 10, I get x equals 2.1 inches. I want to point out how this relates to scale factor. So remember, scale factor and cross products are the same thing. Notice here, I divided by 10 and then I multiplied by 14. So I took my new my new height or my new height and divided by 10, then I multiplied that by 14 to get 2.1. The other method, I multiplied by 14, then divided by 10. So I just reversed that. Remember, we said that's the same thing, just different orders. So a couple other things to go through here uh, about similar figures. Uh, notice the angles have to be the same. Let's take a look at this right here. Corresponding sides must have lengths that form equal ratios, must have proportional matching sides. Corresponding, another word for that is matching. Let's go ahead and write that there. Just remember, whenever you see the word corresponding, you mean matching, one relating to the other. This ratio that they form is what we call the scale factor. Again, new to old. That formula we're going to see again and again and again here. Go ahead and write it again here, just as a little reminder. New over old is that ratio. Just to drive that point home, let's look at it again, uh, kind of one of the things we did yesterday. If I have a rectangle that is uh, 2 by 4, so 2 wide, 4 tall, that's going to be similar with the rectangle that is 4 by 8. Notice uh, 2 to 4 equals 4 to 8, right? 2 to 4 is 1 half, 4 to 8 is 1 half. Let's take a look at the, uh, the, center of the, the center of dilation here. So if I connect the matching points here, the corners, they all come back to 0, 0. Look at the, the, the line here. Look at how the, the line is relating uh, the width to the height. For every 2 that I go up, so if I go here, if I go up 2, I go over 1. Up 2, over 1. So every 2 that I go up, I'm going over 1. So I could get another similar triangle here at uh, 3, 6, it looks like. Or it's not triangle, rectangle. So I go up 2, over 1. So the ratio of the sides here is 2 to 1 of the two rectangles. So the second rectangle, the purple rectangle, is twice as big as the red rectangle. Now to take a look here, if we just did 8 to 4, 8 is the height, 4 is the height of the red, that's 2 to 1 as well. And notice this 2 to 1 is that scale factor. The new is the purple, old is the red, 2 to 1. We multiply by 2, we get the scale factor. Just showing you that, uh, that where are these corresponding, where all this mathematical mumbo jumbo is coming from. Let's take a look at two more examples here. Here we have a uh, logo on a t-shirt. We're going to put it on, uh, we're going to make a big enlarged advertisement. It's isosceles. Remember, that means two sides are equal. So I have two sides that are four and a half and a base that is six. So we're comparing sides to base here. And I'm told that my new sides are going to be three feet. Let's just draw a little, uh, little diagram here. A lot of times, guys, drawing a little picture is going to make this a lot easier. So 6 is the base, 4 and a half is the side, and I have a larger triangle where the sides are 3 feet. And x is what I don't know. Let's try this with scale factor. I want to point something out here. Notice the new is 3 feet. The old is 4 and a half inches. The problem here is I don't know what that comes out to because they're different labels. 3 feet, I would have to make that 36 inches, right, to be able to divide top by bottom. More on that later. We're going to look at that again on uh, Friday, so to be continued here. Just keep that in mind. If the, the labels are different from the new to the, to the old object, we have to be careful with how we calculate scale factor. We can still do it, but it's going to take an extra step here. Let's just use proportions since uh, scale factors are a little muddled. So I'm going to take the sides, put them, and put the, the old side to the new side, or I could do new to old, doesn't matter. Lots of different proportions I could set up here. Um, so the, the first one I did, four and a half to three, well, three uh, is the, the old, so I did new to old, new to old. Here I did four and a half to six, so side to bottom. Then on the other one, side to bottom would be three over x, and I'm just keeping all the same comparisons all lined up. Okay, so I can do cross products on either of these. 
So when I do cross products, I have 4.5 times x and 6 times 3. Notice on the other side, it would be the same cross products. So let's do a little math here. Divide both sides by 4.5. And, and x equals, pull my calculator out for this one. 18 divided by 4.5 is 4. And look at uh, your units here. I have 3 feet out of the units of my new triangle, so it's 4 feet. All right, one more example, and that's testing for similarity. If I'm going to test to see which of these rectangles are similar, I need to look at uh, the, the proportions here. So, and then when I'm done with that, I'm going to look at scale factors. So the second question, uh, where we could rephrase this is which of these rectangles are proportional? If the side lengths are proportional, then they are similar. So let's take a look at J and K. I'm going to do... Uh, the, the old J over uh, K here, so 10 to 5. Notice those are the two heights over 4 to 2. Notice uh, that's long side to long side, short, to, sh short, sh short side to short side. These both simplify down to 2 to 1. Remember, to test proportions, you can either simplify or use cross products. So since these are uh, proportional, J and K are similar. Now let's take a look. Let's just prove that the others are not similar. I'm going to do J and L. That's 10 to 12. 4 to 5. So 4 times 12, see if that equals 10 times 5. And notice the cross products are not equal, so this is not a proportion. So J to L does not test out, J to K does. Last one to check, K to L. You need to check all these different combinations. So 5 to 12, we're going to see if that equals. Uh, 2 to 5. Notice everything's keep, keep, uh, keep everything lined up. 5 and 2 are both on top. Those are the dimensions of K. 12 and 5 are both on bottom. Those are the dimensions of L. Check the cross products here. 24 does not equal 25. We're good. So last question then. J and K are uh, similar. That means they have a scale factor. The other two would not have a scale factor because they're not similar. For scale factor, uh, remember the formula here. We're going to do new over old. So K is the new J is the old. Uh, that means the scale factors can be less than one, right? Because K is smaller than J. So we're going to do, uh, if it's new over old, we're going to just, let's just use 5 over 10. We could use 2 over 4. But the same thing here, divide both sides by 5, and you end up with 1 half is your scale factor. And the scale factor of 1 half is going to make sense here because that would mean that the one on uh, k is smaller than j. We multiply j by one half, we get k, which is half as big. So keep in mind this formula here, again, we're going to come back to this. Uh, new images dimensions versus the old images dimensions. Make sure you have that written down. I have a couple problems from the book to do, and uh, we'll talk more about this tomorrow.